For Kruma Media's Polity, I'm Tabi Matiba. Joining me today is researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Sutner, here to unpack his column titled The Death of the ANC. Are you not exaggerating when you say the ANC may die? I don't know what is holding the ANC together except the wealth that they can derive by illicit means. Now, if the ANC loses access to the coffers, of the state. A lot of people, they will not find it attractive to be in government because there's no politics involved in the ANC anymore. It's not an ideological party. Like when I was involved, we debated ideology all the time. ANC of today is devoted to hard cash. And if that falls, if you can't get access to that cash, there won't be some glue that is holding them together. As I said in my article, green, gold, and black used to signify dedication to the needs of the oppressed. The people today, I really don't think they care, even though most of them come from the oppressed. They don't care about that. They actually care about flashy cars and all this sort of thing. And if the opportunity for doing that is not there, they may think it's much better to just take what cash they've got and go into business or something like that. And you may find also, since there's, they're not held together by a common desire to milk the state, they may disagree about what they should do from then on and go in a separate direction. Some may join EFF. Some may join another, may form another party. You don't know. When these things happen, they can happen very quickly. And Raymond, your thesis is more or less that the ANC has become criminalized. And once they lose their hold on levers of power, they will lose access to loot and collapse. So does the ANC not hold together for other reasons as well? Well, I don't get the impression that they holding together for other reasons. Because when I've heard people explaining, there's a podcast on the Maiden Guardian about, uh, I think it's from the Tabu Beki era to the pres present. And they had uh, Ronald Lamula on there. And he was asked about being an aspirant deputy president and then to explain the Zuma era. And he couldn't explain it. I mean, this. It was just not coherent. Now, you have a sense that the guy is on the national executive. He wants to be deputy president, and he can't actually put sentences together about the Zuma era. I mean, surely we can say the Zuma era entailed uh, violence, corruption, uh, heightened gender-based violence, and all of these are related to some of the characteristic and the centralization of power in Zuma himself. It was a period of audacious criminality. So what I feel is if someone can't explain the Zuma era and he's actually come in to politics, he's been in politics during that period, and this is a leader, what does it tell us about the organization? I don't think he's the only one. And when they talk about uh, that this there's not a strong NEC and all of this, what exactly is strong for them? They don't explain that they're not giving us a clear vision. They don't talk about visions. Visions are not, the vision is of brands and cents in millions of denominators, not thousands. So I don't think the ANC has got an ideological glue that is holding them together. And also you speak of the collapse of the ANC signaling state collapse. If that is so, what can be done about it? Well, if the ANC collapses and is the strongest party, you're going to have a crisis. And uh, I would believe that it's very important for what some people call civil society. I'm not totally happy with the phrase, but if civil society were to come together, professionals, business, the whole lot of others, to try to have an emergency type of government 
that would be a way of dealing with this. It could be a way of trying to take emergency measures to deal with an emergency situation. Uh, I don't have an answer, uh, but I think the answer will be in, in who can step in to fill the gap. And I'm suggesting we should not think only of political parties, but of professionals, of uh, popular organizations, of welfare organizations, a whole lot of these others who are at the cold face of what has failed in recent years. So that if the ANC collapses and the estate collapse, we're in real trouble. You know, we're going to be in real trouble if the power system collapses. Now, this is the political power system which is going to collapse. And who knows which will collapse first. They're doing their best to stop uh, ESCOM from failing. But political power, I don't know. That was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Krima Media's polity about the death of the ANC.